everybody. Good morning. morning. Hope everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving and we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance led by Commissioner Boyce. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And before we get started with our agenda items, I want to remind everybody that beginning next week, December 10th, the Board of Commissioners will be moving General Session Room to our new location down on the first floor in the Judicial Services Building at 369 South High, which is right inside the pavilion entrance, the main entrance of, the, of this facility. And after 30 years being in this room on the 26th floor, um, we have a lot to be thankful for for having this facility here. And we moved to a new location with more space so that we can accommodate our visitors, our staff, our guests that come in. Um, and we'll have the technology that we need for the new um, decade and beyond so we're very happy to have all of that and we thank our public facilities we know that we'll have um, increased public access we'll have better facilities for those that need accessibility we'll have more transparency because people can come into the building if they're there for something else they may be able to just walk in during a meeting and sit and and watch us as we're doing the public's business and beyond that we'll be able to um, we'll be doing live streaming of our meetings so that you can access our meetings as they're happening instead of the couple days delay as we have now. So as we're trying to improve access to serve every resident every day, we look forward to seeing you at our meetings. And if you have any questions, you can certainly contact our public affairs team to get more information or contact any of our offices and uh, you can get the information on where exactly you go. Parking is still the same and you enter the pavilion entrance, which is our main entrance to the building starting next week. December the 10th and with that um, anybody have anything else they want to add looking forward to the new space I think it's going to yeah. be uh, much more accessible and I, uh, I know that um, it, it, was, it seems like it's just a new space but but it's really not it's really about uh, accessibility and more functionality and um, I've, I've just finished a tour of other counties around the country with NACO and the Gates Foundation and um, you know Franklin County is growing mm -hmm. as you know and it's we are uh, there's a lot going on and I think that um, facility is more accommodating to the kinds of discussions and the people that will be coming in and the um, exchanges that need to occur and even um, technological um, uh, resources for our, our meetings uh, I think are, are being met at a different level and when I've seen some of these other, way these other counties do it that are growing in like Franklin County um, you know we're, we're it's a it's a good step in the right direction yeah. for Franklin County considering mm -hmm. uh, how much business that we've got in terms of growth so I'm excited about it I think uh, PFM did a, a tremendous job they did of uh, thinking it through and designing it and then um, still working out some kinks but uh, that's the process so uh, looking forward to it thank you okay we need the approval of minutes of November 18 
November 25 and November 26, 2019 budget hearings. So move. Uh, second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. The budget hearing minute budget hearing minutes of number eight, November 18th, November 25th, and November 26th have been adopted. Thank you. Okay, County Engineer. Good morning. Good morning. Resolution number 860-19, establishing, altering, and widening of Elliott Road and Hayden Run Road drainage improvement project, Brown Township and Washington Township, Franklin County, Ohio, viewed, engineer to file plans as necessary. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Cornell Robertson, Franklin County Engineer. With me today. Hi, good morning. I'm Ken Cooper. I'm the Safety and Security Superintendent uh, for the County Engineer's Office. Great. You do realize you can shave now, right? <laughs> 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 November's over, so it, I'm just in case you didn't realize November's over. Don't, don't tell my wife, but I explained to her the rules are I can't shave again until next November. <laughs> Is that what you told her, huh? Well, I don't what's, think so. What's your number? I'll give her a call. <laughs> I don't think she's buying it. <laughs> <coughs> Commissioners, this first resolution is for drainage improvement in the northwest part of Franklin County in Washington and Brown Townships. This is the second resolution in a series of two to allow the project to move forward. Okay. If there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of resolution 860-19. Second. Moved and seconded voting Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Resolution number 860-19 has been adopted. Resolution number 861-19. Resolution awarding contract and approving contract bond to M. P. Dory Company for the 2020 Franklin County Traffic Signal Maintenance Program in the amount of $564,151. Commissioners, as stated, this resolution is for traffic signal maintenance contract award for 2020. We had a competitive bid on October 29th. Two bidders and M. P. Dory had the lowest and best bid. If, uh, is uh, MP Dory, where is MP Dory? I've never heard of it. MP Dory, that is a local company that has had this uh, particular program for many, many years. Okay. And so we work, have worked with them for a very long time and um, got to do very good work. Their address is on Integrity Drive South it's here in Columbus. In, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know what that is. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, if there are no further comments or questions, mm -hmm. for adoption of 861-19. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Resolution number 861-19 has been adopted. Resolution number 862-19, CHA Consulting Incorporated, Consulting Engineers, appointing to assist the Franklin County Engineer in performing preliminary engineering for the Reynoldsburg New Albany Road at Havens Road Improvement Project, Jefferson Township, Franklin County, Ohio, in the amount of $400,023. Commissioners, this capital improvement project is in the northeast part of Franklin County in Jefferson Township at the intersection of Reynoldsburg New Albany Road and Havens Road. This is a preliminary engineering contract with CHA. We utilize the qualifications-based selection process. They are located on East Broad Street, and we would recommend your approval. Great. If there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 862-19. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Resolution number 862-19 has been adopted. Resolution number 863-19. CESO Incorporated Consulting Engineers appointed to assist the Franklin County Engineer in performing preliminary engineering for the Zuber Road Plum Run South Drainage Outlet Improvement Project, Pleasant Township and Jackson Township, Franklin County, Ohio, in the amount of $175,467. Commissioners, this is a similar resolution in that it's preliminary design for a drainage improvement in the southwest part of Franklin County in Pleasant and Jackson Townships. We also use the qualification, qualifications-based selection process and would recommend your approval. If uh, there are no comments or questions, move for uh, adoption of 863-19. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Resolution number 863-19 has been adopted. Resolution number 864-19. Resolution authorizing a contract with the Whitestone Group Consultant to provide lobby security services to the Franklin County Engineer's Office in the amount of $163,800. Uh, 
Uh, commissioners, uh, with your approval, um, Cornell Robinson recognized the need for armed security for uh, um, our employees, our visitors, um, and anyone who has contacted at 970 Dublin Road or Fisher Road or our facility at Hendon Road in Groveport. Um, Whitestone Group will be providing the security, but not just the security, the armed security at these three facilities with your approval. Uh, I, I, engineer, um, so it, or have there been any uh, incidents or issues that or is it just general security? And, I, and let me just say, you, you can never do enough yes, for safety. You know, everyone, employees should be protected at the highest level at all times, so I'm not being critical mm -hmm. of that. But I just want to know more. Is, is there is there something um, that we should know? Is there, you know, is this, is this, do you? It's more of a matter of just knowing the times that we're in and some mm -hmm. things that have happened in other parts of the country. Mm -hmm. We looked around to some of our other county agencies and the uh, Franklin County Coroner, for example, mm -hmm. utilizes the same company. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't want to wait until we had even the first incident before we took action. And so mm -hmm. it's uh, trying to be proactive and preventative in this, in this notion. And so um, uh, uh, Madam President, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Engineer, it, it, so will they uh, sort of take over the front part where so they'll be like uh, uh, you have to kind of go through security now even to enter into the offices or will there be like a um, the side they're on the side and they're just kind of watching to make sure everything's okay would be right in our front lobbies of each of these locations mm -hmm. okay right. they will be in um, direct contact as soon as they enter, enter the facilities that's the first person they're going to see is our armed security mm -hmm. and being 28 years um, retired Air Force Security Forces um, mm -hmm. it's just taking that next step always being on alert and being uh, ready for anything we may encounter sure are there cameras in the parking areas where your employees are yes so yes. if anybody needed help in the parking lot your security folks would be there as well Yes, ma'am, and they will have some, some cameras up front so they can monitor. And we also have a, uh, a control center that mm -hmm. we have an additional person in there uh, watching <coughs> the cameras. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yes, ma'am. We've also tightened up security and other means by uh, locking all the doors, mm -hmm. the back doors, different access points. And now each employee has a, an ID, a, a card swipe that allows uh, certain access points depending on roles and responsibilities. Mm -hmm. another, another level. Uh, that we've taken here recently. Uh, Madam President, uh, Mr. Janier, is this a one-year contract and you're going to just reconsider it next year? Uh, or okay. Thank you. Thank you. If uh, there are no further comments or questions, <coughs> move for adoption of 864-19. Sir, moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Resolution number 864-19 has been adopted. Resolution number 865-19, report first of the Franklin County Engineer establishing sums of compensation for a portion of the owners of property abutting the Roberts Road Shared Use Path Improvement Project, Norwich Township, Franklin County, Ohio, in the amount of $19,015. Commissioners, this is a shared use path project in the northwest part of Franklin County. It's along Roberts Road, east of Alton and Darby Creek Road. It completes a gap in the, in the path between West Rock and Clovergroff Run. This was a collaborative project that included Hilliard, City of Columbus, and Franklin County. This particular resolution is the first report for right-of-way acquisition, includes one property, and the appraisal is based on fair market value. If there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 865-19. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyes? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Resolution number 865-19 has been adopted. Excuse me. Sorry, you guys. Resolution number 866-19, I apologize. Report fifth, establishing sums of compensation and damages for a portion of the owners of property abutting the Havens Corners Road, County Road number 16, <coughs> at Morrison Farms, East Drive Improvement, Jefferson Township, Franklin County, Ohio, in the amount of $1,326. Commissioners, this is a road widening project along Havens Corners Road, east of Wagner Road. It's the fifth report for right-of-way acquisition. Includes one property, begins the appropriation process, but we will continue to work with the property owner to try to reach an agreement. Okay. If there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 866-19.
Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Resolution number 866-19 has been adopted. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you next week in the new location. Definitely. Sanitary engineer. Resolution number 867-19. Resolution authorizing a transfer of non-general fund appropriations for a loan payment to the Ohio Water Development Authority. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Commissioner Stephen Renner with the Sanitary Engineering Department. Uh, commissioners, uh, this resolution is just asking for your authorization uh, to transfer, uh, like the clerk just said, from our uh, it's non-general funds from our water capital fund to our debt service fund. If there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 867-19. Second. Moved and second and voting. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Resolution number 867-19 has been adopted. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Stephen. The sheriff. Resolution number 868-19. Resolution authorizing a transfer of appropriations and a purchase order for the return of prisoners. Good morning, Commissioners. Dave Masterson, Director of Administrative Services, representing Sheriff Dallas Baldwin. Uh, this resolution authorizes a transfer of appropriations and the approval of a purchase order to cover the necessary expenses incurred in the pursuit and transportation of prisoners. These appropriations cover the expenses for transporting 45 during July, 35, 34 in August, and 45 in September. The itemized monthly reports have been submitted and approved by the sheriff, and we re recommend your approval. If there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 868-19. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Resolution number 868-19 has been adopted. Thank, Thank you. you. Domestic Relations Court. Resolution number 869-19. Resolution authorizing a contract for attendance services with Columbus City Schools in the amount of $82,413. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Uh, Barb Reeves, Deputy Director. With me this morning is Julie Troth, the Deputy Director for Programs and Services. This resolution is for a seven-month contract with Columbus Public Schools to reimburse the court for 100% of the cost of two truancy officers. The court currently contracts with the school district for three uh, truancy officers. Just to provide a very brief overview of the program, the Truancy Intervention and Prevention Program reduces formal court filings related to truancy by addressing attendance barriers by providing resources and services to youth and families. Um, this partnership is an expansion of the existing program, um, which will provide truancy officers for two additional Columbus City Schools. Um, we are currently partnered with Columbus City Schools to provide services at West High School, Independence High School, and Marion Franklin High School. These two schools have yet to be determined. If uh, there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 869-19. Second. Moved and seconded in voting. Commissioner Boyce. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Resolution number 869-19 has been adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Board of Elections. Resolution number 870-19. Resolution authorizing a transfer of general fund appropriations in order to provide the budgetary allotment for meeting December payroll. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, the appropriation request is strictly for personnel and fringe benefits. Uh, any materials and, a, and services that we need for the month of December will be, a, be able to pay from our existing appropriation. So this is strictly personnel and fringe. Um, as I mentioned at the budget uh, briefing last week, the, uh, I've submitted to our board a proposal outlining uh, a communication plan that included an advertising, paid advertising component to it. Um, it was discussed uh, for a period at the uh, certification meeting that we had on November 22nd, and then it will be discussed next Monday at the uh, monthly uh, board meeting of the Board of Elections. So I just wanted to give you that update as well. So Thank you. Uh, unless there are any other questions, would, I'd respectfully request uh, approval of the resolution. If there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 870-19. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? No. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Resolution number 870-19 has been adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Economic Development and Planning. Resolution number 871-19. Resolution to adjust the boundaries of Montgomery Township, thereby making them conform to the boundaries of the City of Columbus, case number ANX-29-19. 
Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. How are you? Good. Great. How are you? Great. Jenny Snap, Assistant <coughs> Director, Economic Development and Planning. We have um, five resolutions this morning. I'm joined this morning by Josh Roth, Senior Program Coordinator in our office. He's going to take you through a majority of the resolutions, but I'll take you through the first one, which is a boundary adjustment. This, um, this resolution is to consider a boundary change petition to adjust the boundary lines of Montgomery Township to conform to the boundaries of the City of Columbus. This petition was filed by the City of Columbus, authorizing the submission of a petition to the Board of County Commissioners requesting that the boundary lines of Montgomery Township be changed to make them conform with the corporate limits of the City of Columbus for the Washington Township area included in this annexation. The area to be adjusted includes a parcel of land that was annexed to Columbus from Washington Township and approved by you on May 21st, 2019. Um, that was an expedited type one annexation known as ANX 09-19. The property annexed consisted of 2.633 acres at 6488 Hayden Run Road, and that was located east and north of Hayden Run, south of Hayden Run Boulevard, and west of Avery Road. The City of Columbus accepted the annexation by Ordinance Number 2268-2019 on September 16, 2019, and under the terms of the annexation agreement between Columbus and Washington Township, the boundaries of the site must be conformed so that the territory annexed <coughs> from the City of Columbus from Washington Township is actually transferred to Montgomery Township. Petition has been filed in accordance to Section 503.07 of the Ohio Revised Code. And pending any questions, we request your approval. And um, as Commissioner Brown usually requests that I uh, mention, Montgomery Township is the paper township in this particular instance. That means that it has no um, administrative authority. It just, it, it, as it says, it's just in on paper only. Um, there is no actually any um, administrative authority or any sort of services um, it just happened to be involved by Columbus through annexation so thank you for that explanation because I, I I turned to Commissioner Brown and I said Montgomery Township where's that at? <laughs> we, what is our other what is our other paper township we have another one well we discovered um, this year <laughs> um, after doing some research that there was uh, another paper township Upper Arlington Township which yeah. we did not realize actually <laughs> existed so yeah I didn't either until you told us about it <laughs> and I just well, Montgomery was the only one I thought Montgomery right. we discovered that by doing some research with the main library so yeah yeah <laughs> So um, we only receive about two of these a year. So that's why we, uh, Commissioner yeah. Brown likes the public to know actually what a paper township yeah, is. Yeah, because people wouldn't know otherwise that right. there's no township trustees. Right, no nothing. authority yeah. except on paper. Yeah. I, I was thinking Thank to myself, why, why do I know that? Why, why do I, I not know? know that township? And then I was like, and she was like, it's a paper township. So, okay. All right. I had to learn it too. Yeah. I mean, it, you don't know. <laughs> yeah. you know? Uh, if there are no further comments or questions, move for adoption of 870. I, oh, I'm sorry. Do, do, do we know? Does every town, does every uh, county have a paper township? Is this a, no, I think it's probably more the urban counties gotcha. that have had a lot of annexations uh, through, you know, larger cities. Gotcha. Okay. Sorry. Um, it, I, I know for folks are like, why are you guys like? <laughs> but, uh, but it's actually it's interesting. It's, it's, just, it's, one, it's one of these anomalies uh, that we run it into. It just is. A, we're nerds, and so. And so am I. So this is exciting stuff. I'm glad you guys are interested. <laughs> stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Everybody in this room is a nerd of some sort. It, it just we are. It is what it is. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Yeah, I've known you for 15 years. You are a nerd. <laughs> All right. With that, um, I'm going to move for adoption of resolution 871-19. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Resolution number 871-19 has been adopted. Resolution number 872-19. Resolution to repeal the Franklin County Administered Enterprise Zone within the city of Whitehall. Good morning, commissioners. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, back in, in the 
early 2000s, uh, the county established a number of enterprise zones in our suburban uh, municipal partners. And uh, the city of Whitehall underwent a, uh, they revised their strategy for tax abatements um, and their, their municipal authority allows them to, to grant tax abatements through the community reinvestment area program. Um, and the enterprise zone program is <coughs> it's sort of a quirk. The only two um, local governments that can create these are counties and then central cities <coughs> of mm -hmm. metropolitan statistical areas. Um, and so this is actually a zone that we would administer and we've never, we've never used it for the purposes of granting a tax abatement. And with, um, with the Whitehall having um, reorganized their strategy around tax abatements and in the interest of aligning our economic development strategy with our local partners, this is an administrative step to repeal that uh, enterprise zone. Great. Yeah, thanks, Josh. I, I, and I, I think it's what's important to know is uh, the cooperation with the city of Whitehall. And that, that's really how this should work. You know, even though it, that seems like a tool or an instrument to um, have an impact, if they're um, if they've got other plans for that area or they've realigned some uh, policy um, um, items, then, then it just makes sense that we uh, align ours with theirs. So I just, I like that we're cooperating with the city of Whitehall here. So if there are no further comments or yeah. questions, move for adoption of 872-19. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Right. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Resolution number 872-19 has been adopted. Resolution number 873-19. Resolution authorizing a novation agreement with one Columbus. Second the uh, purpose of this resolution is to amend our annual economic development partner contract uh, with Columbus 2020. Um, and that's to reflect their name change to one Columbus. And so this resolution will allow us to authorize payment for the final invoice and uh, for their economic development services through the, the rest of the year. Great. If there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 873-19. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Resolution number 873-19 has been adopted. Resolution number 874-19. Resolution authorizing the assignment and assumption agreement of the Enterprise Zone Agreement between Franklin County and PharmaForce Incorporated. The purpose of this resolution is to amend a 2004 Enterprise Zone Agreement with PharmaForce. This, is, uh, this was actually in our Hilliard Enterprise Zone. Um, and this is in light of their recent corporate restructuring and subsequent name change to American Region Inc. So under this amended agreement, uh, American Regent will assume all the remaining obligations of that agreement. Uh, and the interesting thing about this is that um, the tax abatement actually ended in 2015. Um, and so there's this clawback provision within the agreement that if the company should relocate or cease its operations uh, within a five year period after the end of the abatement, um, then we would be able to, to try to recoup some of the, tax, the taxes that had been abated. Um, so this resolution recognizes that their corporate restructuring is not a default on that obligation. Just also wanted to note that the Turk, um, our Tax Incentive Review Council, last reviewed this in 2016, and uh, the company was in compliance at the time, exceeding their job creation commitment by a total of 43, and their payroll commitment by a little more than half a million dollars. So they've been a good corporate citizen for us. Madam President, uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, I was going to ask, um, what, what kind of company is Pharma, Pharma Force? What are they? I don't remember. <laughs> I'm looking to Director Shimmer. Uh, they are in the pharmaceutical business, obviously. They're uh, a supplier. Okay. Um, and then I just want to say I, 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 I believe very strongly in clawback provisions mm -hmm. that if company doesn't um, mm -hmm. uphold its end of the bargain that we're able to uh, recoup what was uh, abated in the, in the original agreement and so um, I'm supportive of this. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, if there are no further comments or questions, move for adoption of 874-19. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Resolution number 874-19 has been adopted. Resolution number 875-19. Resolution authorizing an amendment to the Enterprise Zone Agreement with the City of Grove City and Grove City MOB LLC. Uh, Commissioners, so this is a project that is in our Enterprise Zone 
with Grove City. Um, and this was a project that, that we brought before the board back in 2017 uh, to enter into an enterprise zone agreement for the construction of an $11 million medical office building facility. Um, and their job creation commitment was for uh, 20 new um, permanent FTEs and to maintain a payroll of at least $1.6 million. Um, and the reason why we need to do this resolution is because they experienced some construction delays and so they, we need to adjust some deadlines within that original agreement. Um, do you think they will meet the obligations of yes. the agreement? Mm -hmm. Okay. If there are no further comments or questions, move for adoption of 875-19. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Resolution number 875-19 has been adopted. Thank you, commissioners. And for your interest in paper townships. <laughs> Job and family services. Resolution number 876-19. Resolution approving a subaward agreement with Action for Children for quality early learning program services in the amount of $300,000. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioners. Vivian Turner, Assistant Director. Joy Bivens, Director of Job and Family Services. Good morning, Commissioners. Under this agreement, Action for Children will provide recruitment, training, and ongoing technical assistance for individuals looking to become state licensed family child care providers. In addition to providing mandatory core training pro classes to obtain a license, Action for Children will also continue to offer training and technical assistance to provide to providers pursuing step up to quality rating. During the last contract period, Action for Children assisted 154 family child care providers to obtain, renew, or increase their STAR rating and secure step up to quality commitments from 61 providers. Under the new contract, Action for Children plans to secure 60 step up to quality commitments, ensure 50 home providers register for step up to quality uh, rating, and ensure 45 home providers renew or increase their rating. In addition to providing individualized technical assistance, this resolution also supports goal 11 of the Rise Together Blueprint, increasing the number of children at or near the poverty level experiencing academic success. And commissioners, just really quick, as we're talking about this um, particular resolution, I would like to make mention for the public that with your $2.5 million investment due to the step up to quality mandate, by the state which we have identified potentially could have been a community crisis and we're still working on that with the free training and those dollars that you have allocated to date franklin county has provided 390 providers separate from this contract with free technical training free tr technical training assistance and 212 of those providers have received their star rating that's that's great and i know we still have um work to do yes. is there any information you want to give to providers or to anybody of how they can get trained yes. you, while you've got the microphone you always ask me this and i always uh, never have the phone number but <laughs> you can go to step up to the number two starrating.com we will be continue to provide free training we're having a free informational session this evening at 6 30. um and what else are we doing um basically we have ongoing training for centers and home providers yeah. um by um we by contacting us via the uh website or calling you can register for this free training thank you pending any questions we ask for your approval Great really important it's a workforce issue as well as it is to get children into this quality child care right and i want to make mention just really quick out of twenty-seven thousand children that receive publicly funded child care you know 68 percent of those kids live in the lowest asset neighborhoods and they are children of color when we talk about the poverty blueprint plan these are these efforts these contracts partnering with action for children and others us doing our own training is essential and that's why we have a representative on staff now that goes door to door engaging those um those administrators in order to get stepped up and as i understand it we're the only county in the state that has expended dollars in the way that we have to make sure that our child care centers have received the training in the way that they have. 
because 10,000 working mothers and fathers would not have been able to drop off their children. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you for that. Hello. Hi, sir. <laughs> I'm waiting. <laughs> I wasn't going to do that. I actually was, but I'm not going to. Um, if there are no comments or questions, uh, move for adoption of 876 Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Resolution number 876 19 has been adopted. Resolution number 877 19. Resolution approving subaward agreements with Impact Community Action and Partners Achieving Community Transformation for Workforce Training Programs in the amount of $800,000. Commissioners, this um, particular resolution, again, is with Impact and will con in, um, PACT, of course. Impact will continue to partner with Capital Transportation on the Roads to Work Training Program. Participants complete an estimated of 180 hours over a five-week period to earn their commercial driver's license, or CDL. During the last pilot, 19 of the 20 graduates have accepted employment in transportation industry, earning a wage of $18 per hour. Under this new agreement, the partners will seek to enroll 75 um, um, low-income, underemployed, former incarcerated individuals in the program. Also, commissioners, under this same resolution is the Building Care Futures Community Health Worker Training Program, which offers the um, by the Ohio State University Nursing School in partners with PAC, which is a 12-week certification program where residents from low-income communities, including Celebrate One's high-priority um, neighborhood communities with skills of training to become a certified community health worker. Commissioners, again, these programs, we believe, both are programs that support goal number three in the Rise Together Blueprint, increasing access to relevant training for credentialed um, for credentials that meet local demand with employer commitments to hire and promote. I can't say anything more about that. This is one of the, these are these types of programs that really assist so that individuals do not go into debt in order to earn a livable wage. Today we have with us Bo Chilton from Impact, who is a lead agency um, organization for the Roads to Work program. In addition to, we have a student in the Roads to Work program, Ms. Kimyata Harrison, if they would both please come. Good morning. Good morning. Commissioners, thank you uh, for the opportunity to be here and thank you for your support uh, to President Brown and Committee Chair Boyce and to Commissioner O'Grady. I thank you. Commissioner O'Grady, I do want to say one thing. Um, we have clarified our core values and one of those things is about personal responsibility and one of our mantras actually came from a statement that you made. Um, when you said we're going to, you were talking about racial equity, you said we're going to name it, own it, and address it. And uh, so that's been one of our mantras. So just wanted to share that with you. Thank you for the opportunity to support this program. It has been impactful. Um, as Director Bibbins stated, 19 of the 20 <coughs> in the pilot have graduated and have employment. Um, we have an average salary between 50 to 60,000 for those graduates. Uh, we do have three who have some um, supportive services needs, and so this really meets with the goals of the Poverty uh, Rising Together Blueprint. Um, under the section of jobs, increase access to high paying jobs by, uh, number three, increasing access to relevant training credentials that meet local demand with employer commitments to hire and promote, we have done that. Um, under number four, improving and increasing the delivery of supportive services for individuals to access to employment. Again, directly impacting those things. Um, as Director Biven said, uh, sometimes we have people who just need a little more support. They have challenges and barriers, uh, and that's what the comprehensive case management approach that we take is there to address. And so just very excited about this program, and thank you for your ongoing support. Um, we expect to see similar results. Um, but better than hearing from me um, is to hear from one of our students who's actually going through the program and can talk about how it's impacted her life. Uh, Kimyata Harris. Welcome. Hi. Thank Hello. you. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Um, I wanted to say that I am filled with extreme joy to have been able to have the opportunity to utilize a program that puts me in a better position financially. Um, with a lot of struggles in my life, um, I haven't been able to get to where I wanted to be. Um, been looking into trucking for some <coughs> years 
and having the opportunity to attend the school um, such as Capital Academy um, who have well-trained staff um, who take their time with you who um, teach you everything that you need to know before you're set out to work for a trucking company all the tools are there they have a plethora of companies that come um, to tell about their companies um, we have an opportunity to pick a job where it's not so much as searching for a job the opportunities are there um, so I really am very excited and happy that I've had the opportunity to go through this program I feel very confident mind you I take my exam tomorrow so ah, <laughs> that's wonderful. But, um, I also enjoy meeting the people at impact um, they're very helpful have plenty of resources if it had not been for this I don't know where I would be right now mm -hmm. so um, I want to thank everybody who has pulled together and have supported the program and I'm just ready to get out here I um, also wanted to add um, being a woman in a trucking field mm -hmm. we have always been the small percentage in mm -hmm. trucking so that's also another thing that I'm proud to be a part of it because be. sure. this program app actually keeps up with the rapid change. There's more women in the trucking industry. So I saw that in the first group that that graduated from this program, there were several women that graduated. So I'm happy to see you in the program. I have a question for you. How did you find this program? I had been thinking about going into trucking for about three years. Mm -hmm. um, couldn't do it because I was taking care of my mother who passed away two years of cancer. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't have the opportunity. So I started doing a little research, getting online, kind of talking to people around me that kind of knew a little bit about the industry and came in to Capital. To Capital. Mm -hmm. And they introduced me to Impact and then it went on from there. I went and got everything that I needed to do. Um, so far, I've already had my tanker endorsement, so I'm looking to get all my endorsements so that I'm um, more accessible, uh -huh. more versatile in the job field. So um, More flexible. Yeah, more They're, flexible, exactly. That's wonderful. So that I can be utilized in any area. Mind you, I never drove a stick before. <laughs> <laughs> so now, uh, she's a pro. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. So I, I thank everybody, and I thank you guys thank for you. this program. Appreciate you. I really yes, appreciate. And Mr. Crockett is in the you, audience as well. But I just want to acknowledge him. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was just about to do that. Okay. <laughs> yes, director. Uh, and I, I, the reason why that's important is because. Um, this is an example of a community uh, private uh, public private partnership uh, you got capital transportation yeah. impact in Franklin County really working together to provide a pathway for uh, people to be successful and and that's what I love about it the one question that I have and, and this may be for mr. Crockett it might be for mr. Tilton or maybe even miss Harrison and, and that's trucking you know, uh, with all the advances in technology today, um, I think logistics is the, is one of the areas that is continuing to grow uh, in a way that is almost unbelievable. I mean, you, there is no time. Think about this for a second. There is no time you can be on the road ever. Two in the morning, five in the morning, ten at night, where there aren't trucks on the road, and they're transporting goods. You know, and that's that's how we all live. That's how when you buy your TV or you buy a jacket or whatever, uh, one way or another, it's made its way to that store, to your neighborhood via a truck, more than likely, at some level of its journey to get to you. And so um, maybe one of you could just talk about logistics, advanced logistics growing in Central Ohio as sort of the hub of advanced logistics as it relates to trucking and, and commerce because I, I think this is an I, and I raise this because I think this is an area that we need to invest more or think about a greater investment in um, madam chair uh, commissioners so good to see you mr. Crockett. thank you so much it's, it's great to be here um, uh, commissioners 
um, Director Bivens. Uh, I wanted to just say that um, this is uh, a, a wonderful uh, opportunity for me to, to, to be here today to talk about the wonderful things that you guys, uh, the commissioners, and as well as um, Director Bivens and her, her, uh, her staff have uh, worked over the years. I think I came to see um, uh, Commissioner Brown several years ago oh, yes. about this program. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that's happening in the industry is um, there is a tremendous need for CDL drivers. Uh, as you, mean, as you, you know, um, this is one of the most in-demand professions that's in the industry right now, and primarily for two reasons. One is the number of uh, uh, truck drivers, the average age is about 55. So they're leaving the industry at a far greater rate that millennials and young people are entering the field. And as a consequence, it's leaving a gulf in terms of the demand. And so as a consequence, there is a huge, huge demand nationwide, company to company, whether it's private or whether it's government. And so as a result, uh, this is a tremendous opportunity for people who uh, we serve. And so um, as you talk about, there's another reason in terms of e-commerce, the movement of mm -hmm. goods and services in direct um, commission of voice. That's specifically what you're asking about. And that is because we have a great economy, uh, the, the, the movement of goods and services across, across the, the country, uh, one of the things that's happening is there is a um, there is a need that's being uh, uh, precipitated by this good economy and to move goods and services, uh, to goods across the country. And so these companies all around, whether it's state, whether it's local, uh, whether it's a national uh, carriers are needing drivers. Now, if you couple that with the fact that uh, I just had a conversation with uh, uh, um, Mr. Rob, Director Roberts uh, about his CDL training program and you talk about ODOT <coughs> with respect to snow and ice removal and then you talk about Rumpke and the City of Columbus and all of the other companies, <coughs> construction, um, you know, you name it, landscaping, they all require CDL drivers because their vehicles exceed 26,001 pounds and so as a result the, there is a tremendous, tremendous need and gulf between the available drivers and the need for drivers. And so as a result, um, again, uh, it's one of the things that for me, it's wonderful to see uh, the, the, the clientele base that we're serving to come in that are unemployed, underemployed, returning from uh, being incarcerated. Mm -hmm. All of those individuals who have these barriers that um, that uh, Director um, Bo Chilton is helping to overcome some of those barriers to employment as well as the Job and Family Services Department is aiding in doing that aspect and then coming to capital to get the hard skills to produce individuals who go from uh, poverty basically to a livable wage with benefits at average wages of just this last cohort of about $55,000 a year. So that's tremendous. And as an entrepreneur and as a community person, uh, it's great to make a living at it, but it's also great to see people change their lives. Absolutely. So this program has been transformational. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good. Well, we appreciate it. This is the kind of, of program that, you know, it's, it's just such a pleasure to, uh, to be able to invest in. Um, I mean, Christian Boyce certainly hit it on the head when he talked about the, the, the public-private partnership, that, that community partnership that, that it is, but it's just um, when you can see, you know, the difference that's being made in, in folks' lives, and, and, and uh, it's just it's such a great uh, rewarding thing uh, for us as commissioners to be able to, to see the impact that we're making. We, we do things like this, you know, uh, you know, it, it, there's there's several different things, that, you know, many different things that we do that are like this. But when we we get an opportunity to see the impact, uh, it's just such a rewarding thing. Um, you know, yeah. for the you know you can you can often see, uh, you know, you go out and especially this time of year when when uh, when the economy is booming because it's the holiday season. But you know, when you're out there and you see uh, as many trucks on the road as there are. Uh, you can tell the economy's moving the way that it is, especially here. This is a, uh, a logistics hub here in, in central Ohio. 
and uh, you know when when uh, when you're out there and, and the traffic's like it is and the trucks are moving across the highway you know that uh, uh, the economy's booming and, and the opportunities are ripe so uh, best of luck to you Commissioner, if I can mention one last thing that Kenyatta mentioned, Kenyatta, that is our partnership with the trucking industry. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually have trucking companies come uh, and bring lunch to our students uh, as the price of admissions <laughs> to access these individuals who are going to be uh, graduating. And so over the course of the, the four or five weeks that they're there, they see many, many trucking companies who are coming in to make the recruitment bills. Yeah. And so these individuals don't have to go out looking for jobs. <laughs> jobs come looking for them. And so that's one of the unique things about the program. What's the, what's the starting salary roughly? Uh, uh, right now it's between fifty and $60,000 okay. a year to start. Wow. And uh, I, I think it's, uh, when I started this about eight years ago, it was like 38000 mm -hmm. So it's virtually gone up by about 40 to 50%. Competitive too, yeah. That's yeah. great. So Thank that's you great. so much. Uh, I wanted to make sure that you all knew this is just one of the programs right. that through your leadership that you're investing in. Right now we have the Driving Futures Program where we're partnering with the Teamsters through the Building Futures Program where those individuals receive CDLs, but they, they're in a union so they'll do things like move water for construction sites, that type of thing. Because as we know, the number of people that are living below the federal poverty level, we have to partner with multiple partners Absolutely. to support the Poverty Blueprint Plan and provide these pipelines so that more people can move up the economic mobility ladder. Because Bo and Mr. Crockett are just one, you know, just one entities by themselves. That's why we need multiple pipelines so people can go through them. And we will be, res we will be having that information to you um, forthcoming as <coughs> that um, program is um, and I think it's important because people have different strengths and skills and want to do different things and to have as many of these programs as we can to Absolutely. give people the opportunities and pathways Absolutely. make so much sense. Thank you, Ms. Harrison, for being here. Good and luck. thank you, Mr. Crockett. Thank Thanks. you, Bo. Thanks, guys. I don't mess up on that test tomorrow now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> We're depending Kim, Kim Yada, on You can't it. mess up on that test anymore. You gotta, you gotta be focused and you gotta be ready. <laughs> Drive a stick. Yo, I got you. You got okay. it. <laughs> We're counting on it. Yeah. I respect anybody that can drive a stick. Me and my husband almost broke up because I tore up his stick. <laughs> well, I want to encourage Ms. Harrison to come back and visit us after you've had some time on the road and tell us a little bit more about your journey and give us an update at some point. Absolutely. He tore up his clutch and he still married it you. It was a it was a brand new Mustang, a ninety nine back he in ninety nine. He that's sure a, did. That's a, a, <laughs> that's a heck of a guy. <laughs> if uh, if there are no further comments or questions, move for adoption uh, of eight seventy seven dash nineteen. Moved and second in voting, Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Resolution number eight seventy seven dash nineteen has been adopted. Joy Res asked my wife about putting a six thousand dollar engine in her new car. Yeah. Yeah, I still I stayed married to her, so it's okay. Mary. Yeah. Re <laughs> Resolution number eight seventy eight dash nineteen. Oh, that's right, you remember. Resolution approving a subaward agreement with Tech Core Ohio for youth technology <laughs> programming in the amount of one hundred eighty thousand dollars. <laughs> Commissioners, Computing Career Course is a 15-week program designed for high school students to increase participants' knowledge of and skills in the computer sciences field. This program introduces students to a variety of technology career pathways, including programming, software engineering, robotics, and app development. The students earn badges for mastering different skills, equipping them with the tools to compete in the 21st century technology-based economy and making them more attractive to college admission counselors and potential employers. They're, these are good paying jobs and demand career fields that students might not otherwise be exposed to. This year, TEPCOR will target approximately 125, 10 of eligible youth ages 14 to 18. The resolution supports youth goal number 11 of the Rise Together Blueprint, increasing the number of students at or near the poverty level experiencing academic success. Pending any questions, I request your approval. If there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of uh, 878-19. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Resolution number 878-19 has been adopted. 
Resolution number 879-19. Resolution approving amendments to subaward agreements with Community Refugee and Immigration Services, Ethiopian Tuero Social Services, Jewish Family Services, and Us Together Incorporated for Refugee Employability Services in the amount of $1,373,182.85. As you know, we are the only County Job and Family Services Agency to receive state refugee social services funding. The funding is intended to help eligible newly arrived refugees across Central Ohio region address challenges and barriers to employment, such as language, education, and work skills. The ultimate goal is to help move these individuals and families who have been impacted by trauma and violence into employment as soon as possible. Over the past three years, the Franklin County Refugee Social Services Collaborative Partners have enrolled more than 1,600 refugees in the RSS program, with 70% of the refugees obtaining employment. <coughs> Excuse me. Ex this is exceeding the state target of 53%. Most of these jobs are full-time with benefits, providing an average wage of $12.96 an hour. With this second allocation, our RSSP collaborative partners will be able to serve an estimated 465 refugees. Pending any questions, I request your approval. If there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 879-19. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Resolution number 879-19 has been adopted. Thank you. Great, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Justice policy and programs. Resolution number 880-19, resolution authorizing receipt of Franklin County's fiscal year 2019 Title II Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention Act block and planning grants and the authorization of the President of the Board of Commissioners to sign all acceptance documents and waivers related to the Title II grant programs in the amount of $120,000. Good morning, Commissioners. Michael Daniels, Director of Justice Policy and Programs. <clears throat> As indicated in the title, this asks for your acceptance of the fiscal year 2019 Title II uh, Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention Block Grant. The grant itself is the amount of $110,000, the administrative grant uh, that goes with it in the amount of $10,000 and authorizes the Board of Commissioners to sign all requisite documents. Pending any questions, we'd ask for your approval. If there are no comments or questions, Move for adoption of 880-19. Second. Moved and seconded and voting. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Resolution number 880-19 has been adopted. Resolution number 881-19. Resolution authorizing a subgrant award and contract for services to advocating opportunity for victim services under the fiscal year 2018 Stop Violence Against Women Act block grant in the amount of $35,735.73. Commissioners, with this resolution, we're entering into a contract with advocating opportunity using our 2018 VAWA funds. Um, I'm excited to see where this project goes uh, because this is providing victim services at the intersection of domestic violence and sex trafficking. Um, we know that in many cases um, women who are being trafficked or who are in survival sex are um, um, not in a relationship with their trafficker, but in many cases they are. Um, and so this is really going to address that issue where if my trafficker, my pimp, or the person who is um, engaged in that sort of physical uh, abuse with me is also my intimate partner. As it'll be interesting to see that intersectionality um, and how we can help those women who have traditionally had difficulty trying to figure out which system they were supposed to be in. So um, we're looking forward to seeing where this goes. Michael, we've not done anything in this arena before, no. have we? No, we haven't. Has the court done anything? They, not to my knowledge, no. We do know that um, Advocating Opportunity has done this in other cities, and we were able to find them. Um, but it's it's a delicate intersection. Yes, it you is. Know, as you can imagine. Yeah. Um, but an intersection that we, we simply can't ignore. Yes, uh, Because there's a, a substantial number of women who are working in survival sex or who are in that trafficking situation who do consider their traffickers to also be their intimate partners. Right. But I'll be curious to see what information we can glean from the assistance given and if we see some signs that we ought to continue to invest in this arena because I think it's, it's so important. As, as will we. Thank you. If uh, there are no further comments or questions, move for adoption of 881-19. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? 
Uh, yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Resolution number 881-19 has been adopted. Resolution number 882-19. Resolution authorizing subgrant awards and contracts for services with YMCA and all that for juvenile justice and delinquency prevention programming under the fiscal year 2018 Title II Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention Act block grant in the amount of $25,000. Commissioners, this uses 2018 Title II dollars um, for two contracts, one with the YMCA to continue their, their truancy intervention programming, um, and the other with all that to provide mentoring um, and life skills as well as academic coaching specifically uh, for, for, uh, for uh, young folks who are along the Livingston Avenue corridor. Pending any questions, we'd ask for your approval. If there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 882-19. Second. Moved and seconded and voting. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Resolution <coughs> number 882-19 has been adopted. Thank you, Thank Commissioners. You. Human Resources. Resolution number 883-19. Resolution making the paid family leave program a permanent benefit. Good morning, Commissioners. Rob Young, representing Human Resources. Uh, two years ago with resolution 13-18, you approved a two-year pilot program for paid family leave. The program provides up to two weeks, 80 hours of leave at 100% for childbirth, adoption, or the care of eligible family members for a qualifying reason and can be used once, a, once each calendar year. Uh, the pilot program has been well received. 43% of claims are parenting, bonding with a new child, parents bonding with a new child, and 57% are individuals caring for a seriously ill family member. Uh, the resolution will make this a permanent benefit effective January 1, 2020. Pending any questions, request approval of the resolution. Great. That's uh, great, thank you. If there are no further comments or questions, move for adoption of 883-19. Yes, or second. <laughs> Moved and seconded. Voting, Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Resolution number 883-19 has been adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Purchasing. Resolution number 884-19. Resolution approving purchases for various Franklin County agencies in the amount of $3,823,387.58. Good morning, Commissioners. Megan Perry, Balanier, Director of Purchasing. Marley Swicker, Small Indy Margin Business Coordinator. Commissioners, this morning, Purchasing is presenting to you the final PO resolution for 2019. This resolution includes 246 purchase orders for which the uh, county auditor has pre-certified available funding. This week's Small and Emerging Business vendors include 55 eligible purchase orders totaling approximately $277,000. These purchase orders are for goods and services that have a higher likelihood of participation by small and emerging businesses. Of these, 19 were awarded to small and emerging businesses, which include four minority-owned businesses, two women-owned businesses, and three small and business, business enterprise certified vendors, totaling approximately $160,256, which is 33% of the eligible PO value and 51% of the eligible purchase order dollar value. Pending any questions, we request your approval of this resolution. If uh, there are no comments or uh, that's not an issue. Um, if there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 884-19. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? <laughs> yes. Resolution number 884-19 has Thank been adopted. You. Thank you. The end of the year. Huh? The end of the year. It will begin again. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Board of Commissioners. Resolution number 885-19. Resolution authorizing appropriation adjustments for the county's wellness incentive and public transportation benefit programs, termination payouts, workers' compensation expenses, and to offset budgeted vacancy reductions. Good morning, Commissioner. Zach Tlerk with the Office of Management and Budget. Uh, this is our annual resolution to ensure that agencies are able to make payroll through the end of the year. The resolution includes transfers within the general fund of $9.7 million, transfers within non-general fund agencies of $2.1 million, and supplemental appropriations for non-general fund agencies totaling $1.7 million. Any, any questions, I'd ask for your approval of this resolution. If uh, there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 885-19. Second. Moved and seconded and voting. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Resolution number 885-19 has been adopted. 
Resolution number 886-19, resolution authorizing an intergovernmental agreement with the Confluence Community Authority, an amendment to the development agreement among the county, the City of Columbus, Crew SC Stadium Company LLC, the Confluence Community Authority, and Crew SC Development Company LLC for the support of Confluence Village and a community sports bank park. Well, good morning. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning, President Brown and commissioners. How you doing, staff? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Emma Kelly with Frost Brown Todd. Uh, this uh, resolution before you uh, amends the development agreement that was previously approved by uh, the commissioners earlier this year. Uh, this allows for the Confluence Community Authority to join the agreement. It allows for some uh, changes to the developer company uh, operation, the stadium company, and the sports park. Uh, and um, there's also an intergovernmental agreement that this resolution approves that's between the Confluence Community Authority and the commissioners with respect to the commitment for the economic development payment uh, which has already been appropriated uh, for this year and for um, uh, that commitment which extends uh, for 29 years thereafter so each year you'll uh, approve your budget which will have that appropriation in it um, Mr. Kelly, I, so the one question I have is there, there's been that you may or not be to answer this question and it's okay if you can't but there have been uh, some uh, write-ups with regards to the affordable housing um, element of this entire project um, and <coughs> while this agreement doesn't really sort of get at that um, uh, I, I guess the question I'm, I'm trying to ask is does this agreement is there any uh, indication in this agreement around what is being built or the affordable housing conversation that's going on because uh, based on some of the writings it was kind of indicated that that's the, the conversation is changing um, and so I'm just trying to get my hands around that is that that's something that this agreement no, addresses? not specifically addressed in this amendment uh, this amendment is specifically allowing the the major thing is allowing the Confluence Community Authority to do, to uh, join the development agreement and then the intergovernmental agreement between both uh, the, the county and uh, that authority um, the development agreement well, let me ask this question and sure. maybe this is a different question so will the uh, authority only address it, it's going to be all of the development so they could do they could um, issue debt for the entire uh, development not just the stadium work too is that correct that's correct okay. yeah and, and that is the plan uh, once the authority has the ability with revenues on the project which will be that uh, private mixed-use development that you're talking about they'll be able to issue debt further so sure. that's a question more for the authority it is it is and, and, and I, I was I was just gonna say yeah. um, going forward for our representatives on the board which are uh, Ken Wilson and I believe Eric Janice um, and neither of our, our which are here but I want to say on the on the record we need to um, um, uh, push this conversation uh, uh, um, with our role on the authority board to ensure that everyone has an opportunity to be a part of this community in this neighborhood and i just want to i want to plant that seed because um, it is very important that as this develops there are opportunities for everybody to live there and i want that to be on the record as part of our sort of principal perspective as we go forward on that and so we're issuing bonds for the development that should be a part of the conversation uh, and that, that's really directed at our representatives, uh, Ms. Long, mm -hmm. to uh, Mr. Wilson and Mr. Mm -hmm. Jayas, who are here. That it, I, I, and my colleagues should comment mm -hmm. on this, but I no, but, I th I think you're but right. I think that's important. I do think you're absolutely right, and I think that's a conversation that we need to have and keep in mind mm -hmm. for the authority. My question, I think, for the for us and for the public to keep in mind is our investment and Zach um, can you just reiterate what you and I had talked about this morning our investment is the same it has not changed correct the, the commitment that was initially made of the two and a half million cash contribution is part of the annual economic development contribution for a 30-year period that stays the same does that's state as part of this agreement. absolutely and I just want to make that clear that that doesn't change Absolutely, I yeah. totally agree with that. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. No matter what else is going on, that contribution does not increase. 
And, and um, uh, 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 Madam President, um, Deputy Administrator Long, I, I would ask that Administrator Wilson or uh, Deputy Administrator uh, Janice, I would like to uh, have follow-up conversation about um, this, the idea of affordable housing being incorporated into their broader development conversations as they represent Franklin County on the board. Well, Commissioner, absolutely, and uh, I am uh, secretary to the board. Uh, to right, the, um, that's uh, right. I'm a non-voting member. Non -voting. Uh, but uh, in addition to uh, Ken and Eric uh, and myself, we'll ensure that uh, this gets uh, brought up at the very next meeting, and I will follow up with Ken and Eric to have the conversations with each of you on this topic. I right. think sure. we all have that commitment that we've made with with economic developments, affordable housing lens that we have supported and that we know we need in this community for affordable housing, that any development like this needs to have that component included. And so I'm glad you brought that up. And, and uh, Madam President, in particular, because there are public dollars of course. Used to support this entire Absolutely. development. And I just think that's a a logical uh, and important request that we're just going to have to really, it, it appears, make a, uh, a, a continued push for that conversation. You know, and development is complicated. I understand that, you know, the numbers make it complicated, but it's something that we need to sort of make sure is happening. Yeah. Um, on the, on the and I, there. I don't know if, uh, if Emmett's able to answer this question, and I don't know if, uh, even if Jim, and who's in the audience, our Director of Economic Development Planning, has the answer to this question, but how much actual, how much development, or how much housing is actually a part of this development, or planned planned housing is a part of this development? Do we know that that, that ultimate number is still in flux? So yeah. um, as the plan develops, we'll be able to answer that better. Okay. So we'll just have to keep on top of it, and that's not <coughs> your. Piece well, that's of that's it. something that we certainly. Can be involved in, and I think uh, uh, Commissioner Boyce's um, direction uh, with respect to the committee mm -hmm. authority is a good one. Uh, of the nine members of the board uh, of that authority, um, five are uh, both county and um, uh -huh. city representatives. So right, and it's it's a lot of public money going into the project. It would make sense that both the city and county have a say in some of what goes on. Absolutely, and you do. So, okay. <clears throat> I think we're pretty clear on that. Um, well, I also want to want to thank you all for uh, um, your firm done a very good job representing Franklin County in this uh, entire uh, engagement conversation. So thanks for what you do representing us. Appreciate that. I, if, if you don't mind, Commissioner, I'll, I'll say everyone's really been working, uh, I, I think I've heard it today, in a cooperative manner, trying to do the best for all for all here in the community this has been a, a whirlwind project and everybody's <coughs> put in an enormous amount of effort so thank you thank you it, you know it's interesting it's one of those projects that really um, uh, illustrates the growth of Central Ohio you know uh, and when you're at a point where you're building entire neighborhoods essentially and we've got two major overhauls going in Franklinton and then in this area these will they will not look the same when they're done I mean the entire region won't look the same when they're done and that's transformational and that's yes. an indication of our growth and the the uh, uh, progressiveness of this area but that that's our, our job as public service is to try to make sure everybody gets to partake in that and that's the, the challenge in uh, these developments because it's going to be mostly private investment uh, that we don't have say over but the community authority board will give us a little bit of leverage in um, debt instruments that might be uh, issued uh, on behalf of this you know broader effort and so this you know it's all positive mm -hmm. uh, we just have to make sure you know we contain the conversation around the parts that are important to us and I think the values of this board um, have been clearly stated um, uh, on a regular basis in my three years uh, I you know, I, Frank, well, Frank, my opinion about Franklin County, I, I feel like our values have been emphatically put out there, uh, what we think is important. And is, it, is evidenced by the um, numbers in um, participation and inclusion mm -hmm. in, 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 in this board, uh, even before I got here, but, but, uh, but we've been just so, I think, diligent and I focused think, on these things, yeah, even privately. And, so. 
and I think you can't take it for granted that it's going to always happen. I so I, the, I think that's the it. The point I would like to make about this particular investment, um, this in this particular case is the return on the investment is um, is is tremendous. This is this is a uh, very strong economic development investment because the uh, the return on the on from a sales tax perspective is uh, is an um, it's an unbelievable ROI on this investment. We made this point when we when we made this decision um, many many months ago um, that that the what will what the taxpayer will the citizen and you know the resident of Franklin County will will receive on this what they'll what they'll see in in a return on this investment is is uh, tremendous um, because of. Uh, you know what's going to happen here at this with this development mm -hmm. and and all that's going to be um, coming back on this investment from a, the, the um, uh, what we put in and what we're going to get back. Mm -hmm. So it's just a great a great return. And it's not only a excuse me, commission. It's not only a you know a thirty year commitment by the county. It's also a thirty year commitment by the private entities as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They're not moving. Absolutely. Yep. All right. If there are no further comments or questions, move for adoption of 886-19. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Resolution number 886-19 <coughs> has been adopted. Thank you. Any journalizations? Yes. Commissioner Two. Case number ANX-30-19, an expedited Type 2 annexation petition ANX-30-19 was filed with the Franklin County Economic Development and Planning Department on November 26, 2019. The petition is requesting to annex 0.972 plus or minus acres from Prairie Township to the City of Columbus. The petition will be considered by the Board of Commissioners on January 7, 2020. Site 975 Hilliard Rome Road, PID number 240-000003. Case number ANX-31-19, an expedited Type 2 annexation petition, ANX-31-19 was filed with the Franklin County Economic Development and Planning Department on November 26, 2019. The petition is requesting to annex 0.388 plus or minus acres from Perry Township to the City of Columbus. The petition will be considered by the Board of Commissioners on January 7, 2020. Site Riverside Drive, PID number 212-001273. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. We are adjourned. <coughs> Right.